All right, the Longhorns go three for three in the portal. Uh, CJ, three for three. Uh, Longhorns not only uh, getting the sign or the commitments of Andrew Makuba out of Austin's LBJ by way of Clemson or Klein Kane's wide receiver via University of Houston, Matthew Golden, but now UTSA edge prospect Trey Moore. He of 14 and a half sacks, 17 tackles for loss, and 45 tackles in 2023 has decided to become a Texas Longhorn. He chooses Texas over Alabama and a host of others, including Ohio State, Ole Miss, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, what exactly is Texas getting here uh, in Trey Moore as a prospect, CJ? I mean, you're getting an edge that can produce. And, you know, for the last couple of years, that's really all Texas fans have been wanting. And there's been, you know, great leaps at the edge position that we've seen from Texas since this staff has been here. There's still been a lot to desire. And I think with Trey Moore specifically, you're looking at a guy that knows how to get to the quarterback. You know, you're getting a guy that can get behind the line of scrimmage and create plays for loss. And, you know, those stats about Texas creating pressure on quarterbacks over the last two years have been great. They've been in the top five, the top 10 each year in terms of creating pressure on the quarterback with rushing. Now you're getting a guy that can finish. And I think that's very exciting, especially when you add him to a room that is getting an, you know, an, an older Ethan Burke and an older Justice Finkley as well. It's certainly very encouraging. Yep, yeah, and add Baron Sorrell to that group. All in all, um, CJ, I think one of the best things about this is uh, Pete Kwiatkowski clearly likes to platoon players, right? He clearly likes to get a fresh Byron Murphy and a fresh Tavondre Sweat or Alfred Collins or Baron Sorrell or Ethan Burke as opposed to wearing them out just 50, 60 plays a game. Texas should have the ability, if they recruit the right way, the ability to, to rotate players and platoon them and not have this big drop-off in production. And that's what you're really talking about here is a guy that is already a highly productive player, albeit on a group of five level, right? He's not in, he's not the a power five player, but still 6'2, 6'3, 240, 250 pounds. Uh, he's a guy that has played a lot for Jeff. Uh, uh, Jeff Trailer's team at UTSA. It seems to me like Texas, and you brought this up in a live stream that we did the other day, that Texas is focusing on guys that they know will fit their culture. They're not going to go reach for players unless they really know who they are uh, and will fit right into what they believe in, and, et cetera. And by being local players like that, they have they they know more of the stories behind the scenes, right? They know more of who those guys are. I mean, off the bat, Texas is familiar with what's around them. You know, the coaching staff is very active on the trail, whether it be in the spring, in the fall, wherever it is in terms of, you know, getting guys to coaching conventions. I know that's a very big part of the Texas high school world and recruiting the state of Texas. Texas is around and, you know, coaches talk and especially around, uh, you know, the the central Texas area. Yeah, you know, it's so important for Texas to take care of its own backyard, and they're doing so right now, uh, and with the portal specifically. And like you said, there's a lot of familiarity with these prospects. A lot of them were recruited by Texas at the time of their high school signing day, uh, and more specifically now, their option to return home to a winning Texas is a lot different and a lot more shiny and attractive to these kids than it was in years past where, you know, you can come back and you can play for the flagship school in the state of Texas, but the, you know, the, the, the results are not guaranteed. And there's, you know, kind of a high option and your, you know, likeliness that you won't be developed into what you want to be as, you know, a highly touted prospect who's being courted by Alabama, who's being looked at by Oklahoma. You know, that's no longer the case now with Texas Obviously, in the semifinal for the college football playoff, it's a lot different now, and recruits are taking note. Well, I, I would add this, too. When those guys, all three of these guys came out of high school, Golden and Makuba were highly recruited enough to go just about anywhere in the country. Definitely. But they didn't have the SEC as an option at Texas. And now they have the SEC as an option. <clears throat> More, excuse me, was not that level of prospect thought to be, at least, coming out of high school. Uh, and so there's that uh, that uh, problem or that factor that uh, manages to push all of these pieces in together to to just create an opportunity for these guys to come home and play for Texas and a team that right now is playing for in the college football playoff. Uh, kind of just crazy that three years ago we were sitting here at five and seven. <laughs> I just kind of sh shakes my head. That's what Andrew. McC that's why Andrew McCuba left. 
That's why yeah. Matthew Golden said, I'll go try Houston instead. Yeah. Um, now you can't sue that. You can't do that to Texas. And uh, they have to stand up and take a uh, note. Uh, talk about this. Uh, Texas now three of three in, high, in portal recruiting. They looked around at some other guys, but they decided not to bring in Tyler Barron, the defensive end out of uh, uh, Tennessee, or Juice Wells, the receiver out of South Carolina. They've been tangentially related to some other guys. <clears throat> Walter Nolan out of A&M, but they're not really going there. They're waiting to see it tight end as to whether or not Jatavian Sanders returns. Uh, there's, there's some other guys out there right now, but three for three is three for three. That yeah. sounds a little bit like back when Mac Brown was handpicking his guys a little bit. Yeah, I was going to say, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't get better than going 100%, you know. <laughs> I mean, Texas has put, you know, the pin on three different guys this portal cycle, and they've landed all three. And, you know, for more, he's the only one that's really taking a hard look elsewhere. And for that being, I mean, it, it was the visit to Alabama this past weekend that came the week after a visit to Texas. So really just doing his due diligence. I think there was a, 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 a great idea for Moore when he entered the portal where he wanted to end up. And a push from Texas kind of sealed the deal there. Obviously, San Antonio, Smith, Smithson Valley, only of, you know, 50 minutes, 100 or a hundred minutes, an hour. Sorry, we've been talking a lot today, but uh, <laughs> but but Bobby, it, it's close to home, and like you said, there's a lot of familiarity there. And with that said, I mean, it just makes uh, you know the coach's job so much easier to say, "Come look at what we're doing right now. Come be a part of it. Come get developed and win." And that's all you got to say because recruits know how it is in Austin, Texas. They know the opportunities of being a prime player on this Texas roster is, and things are really putting coming together, you know, full picture right now for the Texas program. Well, I'm looking at it and you, you talk about this group and, and Trey Moore is the latest to commit. That's why we're talking about it here now. Congratulations to Trey. Uh, but I'm, I'm just thinking to myself how, when I, when I talked about two weeks ago, what Texas was looking for in the portal, culture fit and peace fit. They didn't need, they didn't feel like they needed to go out and just reform their roster like Colorado has to do, or maybe even Ole Miss is trying to do right now, or AM is starting to do a little bit. They feel more like, hey, we need to find the right pieces and get the right people in here in a to make to make it all accretive, not not to not be a negative, right? Not be a net negative. And I think Correct me if I'm wrong, but it feels like they're doing the right things. They're getting a guy that can get to the quarterback. They're getting a guy that can score touchdowns. They're getting a guy that has three years starting experience at a major school. Right. Those are all pieces, right? It's 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 part of the puzzle. And I, if Steve Sarkisian does anything great, right? yes, he's a good play caller, and yes, he's got a, he, he has developed a good culture. But it's clear he takes roster management. Very, very serious and ro roster uh, construction, you know, and him, Billy Glasscock, the director of player personnel, those guys have a real line on what they're trying to do. And that line in this portal class led them directly to Trey Moore and his production at the UTSA. All right. Uh, that's going to do it uh, for today. Congratulations, uh, CJ. Uh, you and I both know that uh, Trey Moore, long time coming. Smithson Valley product by way of UTSA, but he's staying home uh, going to the University of Texas for CJ Vogel. I'm Bobby Burton. And one last thing before I let you go, Trey Moore, hook him. <laughs>